Hey out there, good to see you again. This is Nick Fenton, founder of TickerTank.com. Today what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you my optimal setup for when I'm scanning for options trades. Specifically for options trades, and you'll see why here in a minute. So this is the Thinkorswim chart, TOS charts, uh, in its standard form. And what we're going to do is manipulate it into the way that I like it when I'm scanning. So the first thing you have to do is go up here to this little wrench. And this little wrench here will open up chart settings. Now in the chart settings area, here in our general tab, there's really uh, nothing that I, I tend to change on this area. Just make sure that it has reflects your correct time. In my case, GMT minus 5 is Eastern Standard Time. Um, I don't like drawing snap snapping. I prefer to just do it myself. Uh, I definitely want to show studies, show alerts, show orders, things along those lines. I like the high-low bubble. The price axis, I don't do anything to that either. When we come over here to time axis, that's when I start doing some manipulations. I like the expansion area. You see there's a drop down here, 0, 10, 50. I specifically prefer 20, so I type in 20 manually. And that basically is going to move the chart over a little bit to give a little bit of room on the right so you can kind of see some time in the future. So you can kind of look towards options expiration Friday or you know if it's weekly op options expiration or regular options expiration so that's just, that comes in handy uh, I prefer to get rid of the rollover lines the expiration Friday lines so that it cleans up the chart a little bit but I do keep the, sh the uh, year marking lines because you know it's few and far between it's not quite as you know, those those uh, expiration Friday lines all those red um, vertical dotted lines that you're seeing there in the background there on that white uh, chart so we got rid of those let's go over here to appearance well here I'll hit apply so you can kinda see what that's done so you can see we've we've given a little bit of a expansion area to the right here so we can see some time that hasn't taken place yet and we got rid of all those red lines that are kind of annoying to me now appearance you can choose whatever you want here but I'm a bar guy and I like uh, I like open, high, low, close bars. You know, I'm on the cursor. I definitely want the cross, which just gives you basically. I'll show you here in a second. Um, one thing I like to change on this particular screen is the volume bars. It has a preset color blue. I like color as symbol ticks, so that the red volume bars indicate a downside move. The green volume bars indicate an upside move, and the gray indicate no change in price. It's just it's it's handy to see. If the volume took, if you see a large volume spike, you don't have to associate it directly with the price above it. You can just know right away whether it was an upside move or a downside move, whether it's green or red. So that's a that's a really nice one to change here on appearance, and that's the only one I change. Over here on equities, I like to get rid of show extended session and highlight extended session, but I keep everything else the same. No change here on options personally for me. And on futures, I also get rid of show extended session. And I hit apply. And you can see that changed our volume from blue to the red and green and gray in the case of, of a neutral price move. Uh, so, so what we see on the chart is a nice clean white background. And um, you've got a little bit of expansion area over here so we can see some time in the future. Got rid of all those red lines, but we do have this year line. So you can see where 2012 year ended. And we've got the nice red and green uh, volume. We also have earnings as well as dividends and conference calls, earning conference calls noted here on the screen. So you can associate those quickly with big moves. Now, the studies that I like are very important. The first study I like to put on the screen. So first, you click here on studies, go to add study. And I like volatility studies. Being an options trader, volatility studies are very important. So I go to implied volatility. That adds your implied volatility down here at the bottom of the screen. It's a lower study. I also like to add another volatility study here. So go back to add study, volatility studies, and historical volatility. And you can see this is crowding up the screen a little bit. So I kind of adjust down a little bit. I don't need a huge space for these volatility studies. And I don't need a huge space for volume. I really want the majority of the space to go towards the price chart. Last thing I want to do here is go to add study, moving averages, 
And I always say keep it simple, so I'm sticking with the simple moving average. And right here, it just automatically puts you on a nine day moving average. So I go in here, back to studies, edit studies, click here on my simple moving average, and I change this length right here from nine to 200, because the 200 day moving average, in my opinion, is the absolute most effective. It's the most watched in the marketplace, which means that it has the highest probability of a market reaction. So that's the, uh, you know, that's, that's the way I like to have mine set up. The way I look at these volatility studies at the bottom is basically when implied volatility is at the low end of its range, I'm more so looking at buy side type option strategies for that particular underlying. In this case, we're looking at Apple. It's kind of in the mid range, but it's more towards the bottom of the range. So, you know, here I'd be looking mostly towards buy side type strategies, but I'd also consider some sell side strategies. Now, if it pops back up towards this top range here, around 40, 45, then I'd definitely be primarily considering a sell side strategy, such as selling put spreads or maybe selling some um, strangles short or selling some uh, straddles, things along those lines. Historical volatility at the bottom here just kind of gives you a, a good glimpse of where the volatility is associated with how it has been in the past. So it's kind of like a it's almost like a moving average for volatility, whereas this should more so, this implied volatility should more so reflect what the current volatility is on the front month of Apple. So it's just kind of nice to have these two down here at the bottom to get a quick glance at uh, what the volatility situation is in the particular underlying that you're looking at. And then of course this 200 day simple moving average is like I said the most watched and if you have a stock that tends to react to this particular moving average it can be very valuable it's not always valuable um, but in this particular case you can see you know once Apple broke down through the 200 day simple moving average it did have some downside and this should act as a support turn resistance level you can see it came back up here and tested it from a resistance perspective and failed so it was somewhat handy and once it gets back up towards that 200 day simple moving average you may look at a short opportunity since it reacted from a resistance perspective in the past if it does happen to break through you could have a long opportunity on your hand because in the in the past once it broke through on a downside move it continued lower so if it breaks through on an upside move it could continue higher just kind of a basic setup there and you know, I like to keep things really simple when I'm scanning for options trades and this is my setup hopefully that helps you out